Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. So today we have the great pleasure of hearing from Derek Rogers from the Thrive Movement Australia. How much is poor mental health costing your business? Given bushfires, COVID and floods, many employees' mental health is suffering. How much is it costing your organization? For those who don't know Derek, Derek has worked with, with and for organizations for over 12 years, assisting them and their people be healthier, happier, safer, more engaged, communicate, and then perform better. He provides healthier culture consulting, bespoke and accredited health and well-being training, and the very important follow-up group coaching as well, executive one-to-one coaching. Given, um, as I said, bushfires, um, COVID and floods, uh, are you seeing what I am seeing with um, with companies, with employees around Australia, and that's um, increased fatigue. Uh, I was talking to a guy the other day, he was doing a survey um, anecdotally with his barber and said, what's happening? And he said, just people coming in exhausted. So is anybody else seeing that with uh, with staff, people working, maybe themselves, friends? Yeah, I think we're all, we're all a little bit exhausted every now and again. Yeah, and this was, I, was, um, I wrote an article back in, um, end of March and people were saying, oh, I think it's like Christmas already. They're exhausted. And I thought, wow, why is that? And then I thought, it's probably because at Christmas time when most people had a chance to just you know, rest and recover and, and restore their health and well-being, um, there was still the uncertainty of COVID. And so people were starting this year off, um, whether it end of January or February, wherever you're starting, with only half a tank of their emotional uh, petrol left. So no coincidence that a lot of people that has now run out. Um, and I know myself, I was fatigued. I had to move from Victoria to here. And so this is going to be showing up for a lot of um, companies where their staff just, um, just, you know, what's going on? What's what's wrong with them? Um, and we're asking them, are they okay? And uh, yes, I'm picking on them, but not seeing the results. So I thought today I should go through and just give those people in the room who work, can I perhaps see a hands up how many people work with um, companies and, you know, 5, 10, 50 people, maybe even more? A few? Yeah, cool. All right. So just, yeah, have a look. And if this is value to not only uh, yourselves, but certainly to companies, then um, please share. All right. So let me share, speaking of sharing. Okay. Can everyone see that? Perfect. Yep. Cool. All right. So, yeah, how much is poor mental health costing? So the month uh, and the BX focus this month is on money. So I've often um, talked about in health and well-being and people say, oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you know, we haven't got time for that. But what if it's costing companies money? We're talking lots of money. Um, in fact, you know, some companies, it might be only thousands. Other companies, it might be millions. So how much is going to cost to invest in your people? Well, it's, it's not. It's a, it's a return. So uh, Deloitte Economics, or this is PwC, there's a couple of reports out. Every dollar invested, you get a $30 to $5 return on your investment. So often companies are saying, oh, we can't afford to, we haven't got enough money. Well, man, it's an investment in your people. And at the moment, um, Victoria's offering a $20,000 grant to do with helping training, and Queensland just announced one in May, $5,000 for training and coaching. So no excuses for a lot of companies. So as I said, bushfires and COVID and floods, and then you can see there that people, um, you know, people are drowning. People are going under um, and we're just being smashed. So how's this beyond blue, over 2 million people logging in average on month in Australia at the moment. That's only 10% of our population or more. Anybody else find that just absolutely mind blowing? Two million people going on to Beyond Blue mental health forums. Yeah. Um, you've probably all heard that one in five people will experience a mental illness in any given year. So then with, with COVID, that dropped down to one in three. And I think in Victoria, it was like nearly 50%. 
and how much money is this costing? Twelve billion dollars a year costing us in Australia. This is back in 2017, so you probably double that now. Um, a lot of money that companies are wasting, and this is where I work with companies to help them where they're leaking money, and they often don't see it because they don't look at these things. What's going on with people? It works with Lifeline. She said, Jerry, did you realise that 50% of the calls to Lifeline is just someone wants them to listen to them? They just want them to listen. They don't want advice. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be told to harden up. They just want someone to listen. The people are hurting out there. And while companies are still smashing them with, you've got to keep your, keep your KPIs up. And then I'm hearing other HR managers putting people on performance plans straight away. It's not really the way to just blame people straight away. We've got to look at what's going on for people and people have been smashed. They're mentally exhausted. All right. So lead by example. It was great to see last year the head of the Navy um, lined up all these guys on the deck there. Whoops, we can see. Um, for are you okay? And he was a great leader. But as leaders, um, we know what you to check. How are you going? How's your mental, your mental and your physical health going? Yours. Why? Because you can only lead to be the level that you are. Yeah. If you're struggling, then people are also going to be struggling. So if you work with um, small business owners out there, you work with um, leaders, then check in on them. Uh, because if they're struggling, it's going to be affecting all of their teams. Um, are they leading by example? Are they walking the talk and being authentic of how to care for people? Are they caring for themselves? All right. Um, and I say to leaders, you know, they say, oh, how should I check in on them? Well, you know, you've got to really know your employees, your team. The better you know them, the better you can find out what they need. Yeah. Um, it's their trust in the organisation. A lot of people are still leaving organisations because they're not trusted to work at home or they're told to come back into the office now. They're not trusting them. Um, is there openness? You want a, a work culture that we're open and people can say, look, I'm struggling, and that's okay. How would it go down with the companies that you work with if someone said that they were struggling? How, how would that land? People want to hear it or don't want to hear it. Uh, and they're practicing that vulnerability of saying that, especially with the leaders and saying, look, it's tough. I'm, I've been struggling myself. I need a day off. Yeah. And this does enormous for improving the morale and the culture in the workplace. What are you hearing? Is anybody um, relating to this so far? Can I see a show of hands? Anybody? Yeah, a few. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. What to look for if someone is struggling in your team uh, or the company that you work for? Well, they're going to be making mistakes if they're tired. When we're tired, we go from our frontal cortex, which is where we want to be. This is our higher functioning area. And we go straight back into our primitive brain. Um, and there we make mistakes. We're not calm. Um, we can't think clearly. We're irrational. We're grumpy. And we make mistakes. If you're seeing people that you work with, leaders or business owners making more mistakes and tired, then they could be going to suffer from fatigue and burnout. Uh, people withdraw from peers and social occasions. I've got a friend I'm chasing at the moment who's got depression and uh, he just keeps withdrawing. I say, come on, catch up. And uh, he doesn't answer phone calls, occasional text messages. I don't know exactly where he lives, um, but yeah, they just it's just withdrawing and withdrawing. If you've got friends like that, just give up on them because they didn't return your phone call. Check in on them. Um, they'll be apathetic. They'll be complacent. And you think, why well, are you just lazy? You know what's wrong with you? Well, just have a look at what's behind. Remember the what we see is just the, the iceberg. What's behind what's going on underneath is what we try and cover up, don't we? You know, we put on this happy face. I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, how can we be fine, given all that's been happening? You'll see people like to work, like to log in maybe. You'll see an inconsistent effort. You'll see people being irritable, angry, or aggressive. or will be in conflict. If you've got people in your team in conflict, well, you haven't got a high-performing team, have you? 
productivity, performance is going to go down, accident injuries are all going to go up. Yeah. Uh, they'll appear anxious, stressed, and easily overwhelmed. So any of the people that you're working with, um, you're seeing this, just yeah, have a think. Particularly if this is out of character, if you know companies you're working with or business owners, uh, and, they're, and they're starting to, this is out of character for them, then yeah, just get curious. So I'm saying, instead of we going to judge people, come from that compassion and be curious. What's going on for them? Um, Particularly team leaders here, if you work with leaders, you'll see more absences, more sick days, more accidents, more injuries, more illnesses, et cetera, et cetera. So what can you do for people? There's lots of assistance. The simplest and possibly the most powerful thing is just to listen and ask. And when you say, what support, you know, how can I support you? How can I support you? And people, leaders often say, well, you know, I don't have time for that. I'll, I'll just exhaust it. You don't have to make it all about you. You say, what support do you need that would make the difference for you right now? And then just shut up and ask them. That's all you got to do. Um, employers can adjust the workload instead of smashing them with KPIs. Um, you know, give them a bit of slack, help them. Because if they leave, phew, any person is a professional person, that's costing $30,000, $40,000 and possibly three months to get a new person. So it's far smarter, far wiser, far cheaper to look after your staff. Keep in touch, show your care. And importantly, the increasing that connection to team and meaningful work. Um, with over the last two years, when people have been, particularly in Victoria and New South Wales, anybody, work with, can I see a show of hands who worked with people in Victoria and New South Wales? A few, yeah. Look, they're gonna be really smashed. Um, the connection to team and meaningful work, it is so important, it's part of our DNA. Um, we were told to stay apart, to stay safe, but our brain is saying, oh, I need to be connected. I need to belong. Yeah, it, it is in our DNA even introverted people. So what can you do? So give them some mental health and awareness training for your leaders, for your teams, for each other. I support people how to look after each other as well as look after themselves. Um, you can do the formal mental health first aid training. I'm a mental health first aid instructor. So some companies want something formal and accredited. Others just want a form of resilience training. Um, Emotional intelligence for leaders is desperately, desperately needed right now. 75% of people lose, when they leave their job, it's because of their boss, their manager, their leader. Um, unfortunately, leaders, average leaders, have only got 13% of them have ever had any leadership training. So more now more than ever, we really need good leaders with emotional intelligence. Um, developing a positive mindset in your people is huge. Uh, and then you've got Martin Seligman's PERMA training. Um, simple things, one-to-one -one wellbeing coaching. I uh, did that executive coaching for the last couple of years for uh, high performance um, managers who have been smashed. Um, we can wellbeing coaching make all the difference. Support them, support their people. Um, you know, internal health and wellbeing coordinators, if the company is big enough, um, their own counsellors, or externally, uh, an employee assistance program, which is normally um, companies who have psychologists and they're available to support people via phone call. Okay. So does that make sense? Awesome. Lots of things to do there. Um, and that's me. And we have time for any questions, Darren? Yes, we do. We have about five, 10 minutes. So absolutely. Um, oh, sorry. I thought this was just a 10 minute thing. Oh, just... No, no, definitely. We've got some time. Um, Amy, feel free to unshare your screen and then we'll go back yep. to the gallery view. But all right. well done. First of all, Derek, oh, outstanding presentation. I just love the way that you really um, identify so many different characteristics of burnout, as well as a lot of the things that we can do to help. Does anybody have any questions for Derek? I'm sure there's some questions out there. Fire away. Just, Fire sorry, away. I just want to point out that 
those of us who have staff overseas, mm. it's also important to remember them because they're overseas. We forget mm. about them. So it's, yeah, a big thing to do. Yeah, good point, Tony. Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't matter whether people are in um, the office next door or on the other side of the world, they're still part of your team and they still need to be checked in with them. And the isolation factor has um, also been a huge contributor to people's um, poor mental health and well-being. So they keep your team connected. And now with mm -hmm. Zoom, it doesn't, doesn't matter, does it, Tony? Whether where, where you are, we can, um, no excuses for not seeing people's smiley faces regularly. Absolutely. I was on a call with Google the other day and um, in another country and the poor woman had a baby you could hear in the background. And I think, well... Do I get upset with her having a baby in the background? How dare you do that? But then I think, well, hang on. They built all these beautiful offices that I can't go to. So you've got to be more patient. Mm. That's right. That's right. Now, yeah. um, Martina has a question. Yeah, I was just, um, I just wanted to get a bit more detail on exactly the services of what you do when you go with those clients, when you go into their business. Are you, do you set up the strategies for them or is it more? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's talking to the companies. They either uh, approach me, they want to do maybe something formal, mental health first aid training. So they might say, find me. And then I deliver that. And then they might say, well, that was great. What else can you do? Or we've got this problem. Can you help us with that? Or yeah. I just um, get introduced to companies and I have a chat and have a listen for what's the pain that's keeping them up at night time? You know, what is the CEO, the HR person talking about, thinking about in the car on the way home or there that's keeping them up? That I, I help solve people problems. You know, every business wants their business to thrive. I help their, their people thrive. So it might be the big picture, healthy culture consulting. I'm trained in uh, the Judith Classer healthy organisations modality. Or it could be a whole range of um, health and wellbeing training. The companies want, you know, that high performance, but not what they're realising. You actually, at the moment, we need to start down the other end. You know, you want your people to perform well up this end. We need to put them down here with some basic things. Yeah. Yep. And you're based in Queensland. Is this close to Brisbane? Um, yeah, I'm at an hour to the northern suburbs. Okay. Of in, on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, but I've got airports twelve minutes away. Okay. So, fly around the country now no problem for face to face i love face to face um it's the, it's the best most effective but um second best is zoom from the office at home yeah and i've paired you guys up you'll be able to take that conversation a bit deeper so yeah awesome. <laughs> great guys um paul sheaf yes. yeah um thanks derek um apart from working with big companies like that do you work with small business at all? Um, and speaking as someone who, uh, it's 20 years since I've had staff <laughs> or a boss, apart from myself. Um, what, you know, what, what's your approach to the small business or the solopreneur that feels like burying himself from time yeah, to time? Small businesses, particularly um, working with small businesses in hospitality, uh, they're approaching me and saying, look, you know, concerned about their staff. Um, and then I said, you know, like one recently I was working with from Christmas and said, you know, how is this affecting you? And she just broke down in tears and just said, look, I'm, I'm really struggling. And I said, what support would you need that would make the difference? And she said, you know, can you, can you support me? So, sure. So we worked together for six months and that's just about finished now um, and helping them. Help people if their problems are here, then I help them be up here. The problems, they're bigger than the problems. Yeah. And so just helping her um, manage her stress and overwhelm, and then she's able to think clearly um, and communicate better and help her, help her team so small. And then small businesses, uh, owners themselves might only have two or three staffs or sole entrepreneurs, uh, like we've got here today. So I also do one for one um, coaching, uh, business or personal. And it's always mixed up. Often it starts less because it's all about business and then the more you uh, peel back the layers, you find that it's to do with personal. So it's just, it, it, we, we try and separate work and home, personal, but it, it's all in time. Mm, for sure. Very good. 
especially for entrepreneurs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so Debbie. <laughs> Um, my question is very similar to the one that was just asked. Um, as uh, entrepreneurs, you know, people think that uh, business goes that way, but it's not. It's like this. Mm. And, you know, we have our good days, we have our bad days, and which is very normal for everything that we go through. So my question to you is for, for us who, you know, we, we do a lot on our own, but we thank God for all these communities that we're part of. What would you say are the top three tips to help us keep moving forward when we're feeling pretty blah? Mm. It's that self-awareness, yeah. So if you're feeling pretty blah, right? Yeah. You just say, okay, well, what what can, what yeah, what can I do about it? Is and it's that um, self-care is is really huge at the moment. Um, so I ran a workshop for a HR company um, on the Gold Coast um, a couple of days ago their team of eight staff on self-care so i call self-care um self-honoring rather than selfish so a lot of people say oh, i've got time for self-care and so guilt and shame is in the back of here you know I'm, and so we've got to drop that if we don't look after ourselves then who else is going to look after us and how do we look after anyone else that's right you know nothing not going to be any good to anybody else so um particularly the stats say that if you're a single parent Working full time, even if and and, you know, and and women more than blokes, you you put everything else first, and you put yourself last. Yeah, and then and you the end up, and you just go. Hey. And the other two, three uh, top tips. <laughs> all right, so so self care, yeah, and then how can you um, at night time? This thing called sleep, yeah. uh, it restores us. It restores our well being. It restores our health. Yeah. Um, so leading sleep scientist in the world, Professor Matthew Walker says, if you can think you can cope under seven hours sleep a night, you're kidding yourself. Uh, you just increase your risk of illnesses, accidents. In fact, he said, um, if you're having surgery, ask the surgeon if they had less than seven hours sleep a night and they've got a 75% chance of having, uh, making a mistake. <laughs> so don't do that. We do that. So it's, yeah, the sleep, good quality sleep. Uh, a lot of and I've learned not only does our body need a rest at night time, but our mind needs a rest at night time. The thinking mind. Uh, ladies, you have an average of 60,000 thoughts a day. Blokes, we only have about six. <laughs> now we have 40,000. And do you think when you go to bed at night time, they stop? They don't do that. It's actually <laughs> stuck more. Yeah. Good practice that meditation. I know what five of those thoughts are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So sleep, important. Uh, and, the, and the third one is we've got to do those things um, that reconnect with our spirit, our joy. Is it work? Is it playing sport, catching up with your family? What are those things that um, bring our spirit back alive? So important.